Randolph Caldecott was one of a group of three influential children's illustrators working in England in the tw 19th century. The other two illustrators were Kate Greenaway and Walter Crane. Caldecott's illustrations for children were unique to their time in both their humor and their ability to create a sense of movement, vitality, and action that complemented the stories they accompanied. According to the ALA who awards the Caldecott Medals and Honors, the winner is a picture book that essentially provides the child with a visual experience. The book displays respect for children's understandings, abilities, and appreciations. Children are defined as persons of ages up to and including 14, and picture books for this entire age range are to be considered. The winning artist can be the illustrator or co-illustrator. Caldecott Connections, Book Technology Connections, Edgescape's web project includes background information about the book, author, and illustrator, along with suggested links for students and teachers. In addition, you'll find activities that extend, expand, and enhance these award-winning books. Which of these qualities contribute to a Caldecott winning book? If you chose illustrations, pacing, how much text versus how many illustrations, setting, design and layout, mood, accuracy, point of view, theme, you'd be correct. These books and websites will help you use both Caldecott and Newberry award-winning books in your classroom. One of our goals as reading coaches is to keep introducing quality literature to our students. As you can see, there are many more book awards. It's almost amazing that not every book wins an award of some kind. Brian Selznick is related to David O. Selznick, who produced Gone with the Wind, as well as many other famous films. Now that you've read the book, why do you think the invention of Hugo Cabret won the Caldecott, since it's not a picture book? I loved this book. While I was reading it, I kept stopping to Google to see if George Smiliers was real. Did he really make movies? Did he chuck it off for a toy shop? Is the invention of Hugo Cabret a novel in words or in pictures? What subject areas would you teach using Hugo Cabret? Inventions, movie making, computer skills to make videos, etc.? One of the things that stands out in Hugo's story to me is a sound, a clacking sound. Did you hear it? George Millier hated hearing the sounds of shoe heels clicking on floors. Early movies chattered or whirred as they ran to the projectors. Auto automatons clicked and whirred as they performed their assigned task. The clock sticked in the train station, and the trains clattered on the tracks. In the book on page 406, George thought that the sound of heels on floors reminded him of the sound of my films disappearing forever into the dust. On page 365, Hugo could feel the cogs and wheels begin to engage in his mind, like the automaton he was working so hard to restore. From ancient folk tales with its step-parents or missing parents to modern children's fiction, a disproportionate number of children's books feature main characters who are either literally or figuratively orphaned. View the next five slides titled Orphans Real and Imagined. An imagined orphan is someone who may have a parent or parents but feels orphaned. You will see the main reasons why orphans are a useful literary device in children's literature.
Johnny Depp as J.M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, in the movie Finding Neverland, expressed how children often deal with pain.